Hi, in this video, we're gonna learn about Java generics. We're gonna learn about what Java generics are. We're gonna learn about what the benefit of having them is and how you can use them in your own programs. My name is Shane and this is the Coding Zoo. Our goal at Coding Zoo is to help others learn how to program like yourself. Let's go ahead and jump right in. Okay, so what are generics? Generics in Java are basically what's called parameterized types. Your classes or your interface are parameterized. And what does that mean? That means they're made to be strongly typed. Let me show you what I mean by that. Let me show you. So let's create a class called example main. In this class, I'm gonna create a main method. So previously in Java, you could have data types that weren't strongly typed. They weren't, gen they weren't using generics. They weren't parameterized types. For example, I might have a list and that list might be a list of grades. Now in my grades list, I might have, let's say a 99 and I might have a 68. So that looks great. I could add these two numbers together, divide by two and get my average. That would work out pretty good, right? You could do this. So let's try it. I could do syst out and I could do my grades get zero plus my grades get one divided by two. Now I have to type it because it doesn't know what it is. I have to tell it as an integer. So each one of these have to be typed. So I'm gonna add those two integers together and divide by two and that'll give my average. All right, so if I run that class real quick, it's gonna give me 83, that's my average. Now you'll notice two things here. I could add in 99 and I could add 68, but it didn't know it was integers, right? It's a list of objects. It doesn't know it's integers, so I have to actually type it here. So that's one thing to take note of. That's kind of one of the downsides of not having generics. Now, another thing to take note of, I, can add anything I want into this list. I can add any type of object I want. What do you think will happen when I do this? Is this gonna work? My list of grades is no longer a list of grades. That's the downside of not having a strongly typed data set without having a parameterized type, a generic. So if I run this, I get an error because it doesn't know how to handle this string. I think I have a list of integers in there when I don't, one of those items is a string, so it breaks, right? So I'm assuming I have a list of integers. I'm supposed to have a list of integers, but somehow I got a string in my list and it breaks. And I only find this out at runtime. That's a bad thing. So how do generics help? Well, let me show you a generic. So in here, I'm gonna do list of integer. So now my list is a generic and notice what happens. It says required type is integer and I provided a string, it won't even compile. It won't let me add the word Shane to that list. So it lets me know while I'm coding, I won't have to find out at runtime when it's actually in production or something. It lets me know upfront that I'm doing something wrong, right? So if I change this back to a number, now it will compile. So this list with the less than and greater than sign and defining what types are in my list, that is called a generic, a parameterized type. It lets you know at compile time, whether you're adding the right types to your data structure, right? It enforces that, that's a good thing. Now, another thing benefit of this is, I don't actually have to tell Java down here what's in my list because it's generic, it's parameterized type, it already knows. So I can get rid of those that's casting statements. So the code is more strict. I can only put integers in that list and I don't have to cast everything and assume what's coming out of the list. That is a great benefit. Now you might wonder, how do I create classes that take advantage of generics? How do I create parameterized types? Let's do that. So I've got another example main here created. I'm gonna create a class called document printer. 
in my document printer class, I'm going to have a public. I'm going to have a public constructor, and I'm going to task, pass in a PDF document. In this class, I want to create a method to print the document. So now I have a document printer. It actually is more or less a PDF document printer because it can only print a PDF document. I pass in the PDF document to the constructor and I can run print and it'll print it out. So let's use that real quick. run it, and it prints out PDF test. So with this document printer, I can print out a PDF, but what if I wanted to print out something else? For example, what if I wanted to print out a text document? How would I do that? One way I do that is that I could create another document printer. So I could copy this one and call it text document printer. And I could make it take in a text document, print a text document, and there we go. So now I have a text document printer and it can print a text document. So what if I wanted to print some other kind of document? Do I keep creating more and more classes and duplicate the code? Well, that sucks. <laughs> don't want to create more and more classes for each kind of documents. I don't want to duplicate that code. So how could I not duplicate that code and create just one printer class? That's where generics come in. So I'm gonna go back to my document printer I'm going to delete this class. So in my document printer, I'm going to change it up a little bit. I'm going to make it use generics. So I'm going to use the brackets and I'm going to use the letter T. Now this, this letter could be anything. You can make it A, you could make it Shane, you could call it document type, but for simplicity, usually the letter T or V or something like that is used. So I've got document printer T and the content it takes in is type of T. So here we have document printer. It has a type of T. The content it, say it has inside of it is the content of T, document printer T, and it prints out the type of T. All right, let's go back to the main class here and see how it affects that document printer instantiation. So I have document printer equals new document printer. Now this works, but Let's use the generics. Let's make sure this document, this particular document writer can only be used for a PDF document. So I'm going to do PDF document. There we go. So that makes sure that this particular object can only be used with a PDF document. So that looks good. It's still going to work. I have a document printer. It works on types of PDF document. So it'll print a PDF document. So what's different? Instead of creating a different class for a text document, I can do document printer, oops, printer. I can specify text document. Equals new document printer. And I can do new text document, text document. And there we go. Let me correct this up here. I make sure I have the right syntax. So there we go. So I have document printer equals new document printer and it takes in a PDF. It's a it's a document printer for PDFs. And I have a and I have a text document printer and it takes in text documents, right? Document printer, text documents, right? And I can call text document printer, print on it. Right, so now I have two different objects. One deals with PDF documents and one deals with text documents. What if I were to do document printer, text document, and 
and equals new document printer. And what if I were to try to give it a PDF document? What happens? Will that work? That will not work. What's the error? So required type. So required type is text document and the one provided is PDF document. So compile time checking is provided. I can't pass in the wrong kind of document to a document printer that is made for text documents. There's your compile time checking. All right, so that is how you create your own class that uses generics, a parameterized type. My document printer is a parameterized, a parameterized type that uses generics. All right, that's a little different. Now, I've got a generic uh, type, parameterized typed class called document printer. I can use it to print PDF documents, text documents. I can also use it for other types. Let's do document printer string. Let's do string document printer equals new document printer. And we'll pass in a string, my string. Now, as you can see, that also will work. I can use any type I want to with this document printer. What if I were to use document printer cat? Well, it doesn't make sense, right? Or document printer dog. What if I were to use those objects? That doesn't make sense. So maybe this is a little bit too flexible. I only want to be able to print a PDF document or a text document. So how do I bound this parameterized type to a specific type. Well, let's look at that. So I'm going to go back over into document printer. I'm going to go to where I define the T and I'm going to do extends. So I want to, I want to bound it to the super class of PDF document and text document. And if I look there, text document extends document. And if I look at PDF document, PDF of document extends document. So I can bind or bound this type of T to document. Now, the only thing I can print with document printer would be something, a class that extends document. So if I go back over to my main, you'll now see that the string one won't compile. It's broken, it's not allowed. So that is called a bounded parameter type. It's a parameter type that's been bound to a particular class or subclasses. Now, what if I wanted this, now what if I wanted this generic class to use more than one type of generic? What if I wanted to use, make it use two? Well, that's easy. I can just add a comma, add V, and now I can use two different types. So for example, I might, it might print one content type and then it might print another content type at the same time, right? So it could handle more than one type. And a prime example of this would be the hash map in Java. The hash map has one type as a key and one type as what kind of values you're storing in the map. Now, what if I wanted to use generics with say a method signature and not the class signature? How would I go about doing that? Let's create a method. All right, so now I have a method. This method takes in the type of T. It's defined right here with the brackets. So public static less than T greater than void print T content. So this is a method that uses generics. Let's use it real quick. So print new PDF document Shane. Run it. And there we go. So that is a parameterized method, generics being used in a method. Now, what if I wanted to have a parameter set for what's returned from that method? How would I do that? Well, I could do the letter T again. So in this case, I have to return the type that is passed in. That's the type I have to return, T. 
if I return something else, then I'd probably get an error. See how it doesn't like me returning a string? Because string is not of the type T. T could be set to anything, right? So I have to return something that's a type of T, which is what's being passed in here. Now let's look at another item. Let's say I wanted to print a list of PDF documents. So instead of one, I want to print two. So we're going to have a print list method. Now, one might think I could do this. Could pass in a list of objects. All right, so I have a print list method. Now, this looks like it might could take in a list of objects, right? PDF extends object. There's a list of PDFs. It can take in and, and PDFs extend object. So it looks like this might work. Now, what's the point of this method? Well, I'm trying to make this print list method take in a list of PDF documents or a list of text documents or any kind of documents, right? I'm trying to get it to do that. So I'm saying take in a list of objects because everything inherits from object. Will this work? Let's see. Print list, document list. Now you'll notice it doesn't work. I have a compile time error. List of object is not the same as a list of PDF documents. Now, while PDF documents may extend, while PDF document may extend an object, a list of PDF documents does not extend a list of objects. So that won't work. Now, I could change this object. Again, I could change this object to say PDF document. But the whole point of this print list is I want to print, I want to be able to print a list of different kinds of documents, not just PDF documents. So how could I change this? How could I make this for this method would take in a list of any kind of documents? Well, I can use what's called wildcards. I can use a question mark. Now you'll see it does compile. This method will now take in a list of any kind of objects. So I can take in a list of PDF documents or I can create a list of text documents, right? I can do text documents. And here you can see that this method will take both types of list. Now, I could also take in a list of strings, right? I could change this to a string and I can change what I'm adding to that as a string and also print that string. Well, what if I wanted to make this method bound to just lists that contain document types? Well, we know that PDF document and text document extends document. So I can change this wildcard to, again, a bounded type. So any type, this is saying, this question mark is saying any, any type that extends document. Now when I do that, you'll notice the print list won't compile with the string uh, typed. You'll notice it fails there. It won't compile. So you can use wildcards to define your generic and that way you could have a list of any kind of type and you can even bound that wild card to a specific type or, or subtypes right so pretty neat stuff all right hey hopefully this was helpful to you if you have any questions leave me a message below and i will get back to you also at the end of this video we're going to put a link to our playlist for java videos we have a tons of other java videos that might be helpful to you be sure to click on that playlist so you can see all of our other java videos there i'm sure there's some out there that might be helpful to you hey thank you for watching and i hope you have a great day